you want to find a story where Yahweh looks like a merciless dictator? Critics will say, look no further than the story of David returning the Ark to Jerusalem. There was dancing in the streets as they were bringing back the Ark, when all of a sudden the proverbial needle scratched off the record. Uzzah was struck dead for trying to keep the cart from falling when one of the oxen stumbled. Here is the passage in question. I'll just go ahead and read it. It says, David again gathered all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. David and all the people with him set out and went from Baal Judah to bring up from there the Ark of God, which is called by the name of the Lord of Hosts, who is enthroned on the cherubim. They carried the Ark of God on a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. Uzzah and Oheo, the sons of Abinadab, were driving the new cart with the Ark of God, and Oheo went out in front of the Ark. David and all the house of Israel were dancing before the Lord with all their might, with songs and lyres and harps and tambourines and castanets and cymbals. When they came to the threshing floor of Nacon, Uzzah reached out his hand to the Ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen shook it. The anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and God struck him there because he reached out his hand to the ark, and he died beside the ark of God. David was angry because God had burst forth with an outburst upon Uzzah, so that the place is called Perez Uzzah to this day. David was afraid of the Lord that day. He said, how can the ark of the Lord come into my care? As we can see from the text, even David thought that God went way too far. And the Freedom From Religion Foundation calls Uzzah's death nothing short of cruel. Let me just read a quote here. They write, Here is a chance for Jehovah to demonstrate some understanding in a one-on-one -on -one interaction with a faithful follower. After all, he is supposed to have designed and created every detail of the human brain, so he knows perfectly well that Uzzah's reaction was reflexive and aimed only at protecting the ark. Yet Jehovah chooses cruelty rather than compassion. The terminally abusive treatment of Uzzah is just one of many instances enabling a perceptive reader to see that Jehovah's conduct falls far short of justifying the stream of uncritical praise constantly heaped on him. Now, in the Psalms, King David calls Yahweh slow to anger and full of compassion, but after this, it's kind of hard to see why David could say such a thing. When I first read this story, I'll be honest, I was definitely on Team David as far as being upset with God. It does look like Yahweh was being very petty. But after a deeper look, I realized I focused way too much on God's judgment of Uzzah and I failed to see his mercy. The truth is, things could have got a whole lot uglier and Israel and their king would have had no one else to blame but themselves. For starters, in Exodus 25.10, God gives Moses very clear instructions regarding how the ark should be carried. And in Numbers 4.15, it says that if it's carried wrong and if they touch the holy things, they would die. God repeated himself as far as how the ark was to be transported many times throughout the Pentateuch and what would happen if they got it wrong. And it's not like David and his men complete ignorance. After Uzzah died, they moved the ark as the Lord had prescribed. They knew the correct way all along, but just didn't want to go through the trouble, it seems. Previously, Israel had always carried the Ark of the Covenant in the correct way. You can see this in passages in Deuteronomy, Joshua, and even in 1 Samuel. Not only that, there were 30,000 people present. So for a two-day journey, these men treated God's commandments if they were totally optional, and God seemed willing to put up with it for a time. But as they neared Jerusalem, Yahweh couldn't be seen as just some run-of-the-mill deity that would be treated just any old way as the people saw fit. His words cannot be seen as voluntary before all of Israel, even though he gave them space to get it right. Uzzah touching the Ark was the final straw. Remember that Israel being flippant with the Ark of the Covenant the first time led to the loss of 30,000 Israelite lives. Recall what happened when Nadab and Abihu offered unauthorized fire before God and fell dead. Yahweh said, Among those who are near me I will be sanctified, and before all the people I will be glorified. That's Leviticus chapter 10. As with Aaron's sons, bad things happen when God wasn't set apart as holy. But wasn't God being persnickety about how the ark was to be carried about? Does he have some sort of spiritual OCD problems here? Well, God is very loving and merciful. He's also the creative force behind the entire universe. He's the only being who can create a world full of life and beauty. And that sets him apart from everyone else. That's what holiness means, being set apart, sacred and worthy of veneration. So no, I don't think he's necessarily being weirdly picky here. He's showing that he's to be taken seriously. Here's an illustration. You could say in some sense that the sun is holy. It's set apart and unique. We require it for life. But the closer you get to the sun, the more intense it gets. The power and goodness that allows for this life is also extremely dangerous. 
You get too close to it and you'll end up becoming a crispy critter. Even here on Earth, if you don't take the proper precautions, the heat of the sun can severely damage you if you don't respect it. And in the same way, God in his holiness has created and sustains all of life. He's good. But if you approach God in the wrong way or in an impure state, his presence is also very dangerous. We can see this when Moses draws near to the burning bush. God says, don't come any closer, Moses. Take off your sandals for the place that you're standing on is holy ground. While God didn't literally live in an ark, it did represent his presence to Israel. He said it was where he would meet with Moses. Exodus 25:22 says, There I will meet with you, and from above the mercy seat, and from between the two cherubim that are on the ark of the testimony, I will speak with you about all that I have given you commandment for the people of Israel. In his book, God Behaving Badly, scholar David Lamb points out that the ark was to be carried on a litter, which is a conveyance with a throne on it. King Solomon was carried on a litter, as were other royal figures at that time. These litters were for rulers and kings. Ox carts were for carrying stuff like offerings for the tabernacle or tabernacle equipment or even grain. Israel was basically calling the Ark of God stuff, like some kind of good luck charm. They weren't seeing it as representing the very presence of God himself. The Ark also contained God's commandments. Now let's think about this for just a second. If the Queen of England visited America, we wouldn't ask her to sit in the back of a pickup truck. We might as well declare war with our friends across the pond. The Queen and the people of England would be rightly offended if that's something that we did. As royalty representing their great history, we would obviously put her in the back of a heavily guarded and armored limousine and handle her with the greatest security and care. If that's the case, it's hard to blame God for being upset when he's being tossed in the back of a pickup bed, so to speak. It's no wonder why David repented even though he was angry at first. And there's also the whole sticky situation of Israel losing the ark in the first place like someone would lose a pair of socks. We don't tend to lose things that are really valuable and important to us. We keep them somewhere safe. The ark symbolized Israel's covenant with God. It contained his commandments on tablets of stone. What would we think of someone who was constantly losing their expensive wedding band, especially if they already had a track record of being flippant and rude and faithless towards their spouse. It would just be symptomatic of the rest of their relationship. While God is seen as the bad guy here, critics fail to see that he put up with Israel breaking his commandments over the course of a 12 mile journey. They didn't recognize the holiness of the one whom they were celebrating. David and Israel didn't show God the proper honor. Now let's just be honest with ourselves for just a second. I think the reason that we recoil at stories like these is that we don't like the idea of God not being casual. We tend to think of things like honor and respect as outdated and even oppressive ideas. We live in a society that's quick to not only harshly condemn those who stand in offices of authority, but will even act out acts of murder towards them. The right response to this passage isn't, look at what a cruel jerk God was. The proper reaction is to look in the mirror. If we do, we'll see that we ourselves have been way too light and way too casual with the one who gives us our every breath. Thanks for watching.